Hey guys, how's it going? Valley Venture Investing here today. So today we're talking about Apple. They just had their Q4 2024 earnings um, just come out earlier today. Uh, so I'm going to do a quick video, a quick update on their earnings uh, and give you guys my thoughts here. Now Apple's been doing pretty well lately. Um, after earnings here, we are down about 1.84% as of recording this. We'll see where the stock goes from there. A little bit of a mixed bag. Uh, in terms of the actual results here. Um, revenue was actually a beat, uh, $94.93 billion versus $94.36 expected. Not a huge beat, uh, but this was a September all-time record, so keep that into mind. EPS, we're gonna be talking about this a lot more in this video. Uh, I have this green as a beat, and I will explain in more detail lately, or later rather, uh, but it was 97 cents a share or earnings per share, and the expectation was about a dollar 59 per share. But they had a one-time charge, so if it wasn't for that one-time charge, we're looking at a dollar 64, which would have been a beat. I'm gonna say it was a beat because of this one-time charge, but we'll talk about that after. Cash, about 156.65 billion, so about 157 billion dollars uh, in cash, <coughs> getting closer to that net neutral position iPhone revenue was a beat, which of course is something that Apple's always been really gauged on. Uh, 46.22 billion versus 45.04 billion, so pretty good there. Mac was 7.74 billion versus 7.74 billion, so basically right in line. I think this is we're gonna see Mac grow more, uh, especially if you've been paying attention this week with the new M4 chipset that came out, they just refreshed all their products. This is the first time in a while since the M1 uh, since they transitioned from Intel-based um, processors, that it's actually some pretty crazy significant upgrades. They're upping the RAM to 16 uh, gigabytes base. Uh, these are actually some, some compelling um, upgrades for the Mac that I think for even people that are in like the M1 or something like that, they're gonna wanna upgrade. But it also makes me think of the, the deals that Apple is giving on these uh, new Max makes me almost feel like there is a little bit of softness coming because I've never seen them offer this good of deals. I mean, we're talking about Apple here, right? It's expensive, but these new Macs are a great value. So I think they're going to sell like hotcakes. Um, iPad revenue, this has been hurting for a while, 6.95 billion versus seven expected. But I mean, that's basically in line. Put it as red as it had a, a you know slight miss. Uh, wearable homes and accessories, 9.04 versus the expectation of 9.17. Yeah, here, I think this has been kind of like an underwhelming uh, portion of Apple's business. I don't know how much people are actually upgrading their Apple Watch, even the new update for the uh, over-the-head earbuds. I'm not even thinking what they are right now. I should know this. Uh, <laughs> the studio uh, earbuds or whatever they're called. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, super expensive. Anyway, they were um, pretty minor. They just basically changed it to a you know, USB-C uh, USB-C uh, connectivity there. So it's kind of a little bit of boring. I mean, it's still pulling in, you know, over $9 billion every three months. Uh, but that was a that was a miss. It's been missing for a while. Services, again, it's crazy. Services now reach basically on a yearly basis $100 billion in revenue. For the first time, I think analysts got a little over ahead of themselves. 25.27 was expected. Um, but we only saw about 24.97, so still roughly about $25 billion. Still, I believe the services we'll get into that was an all-time record, uh, all-time record as well. When we were looking at the income statement here, this is where it gets a little bit interesting and maybe some people aren't following this. Maybe some people aren't actually understanding what's going on. Maybe that's why the stock's down a little bit more. Total net sales, we're talking year over year here. 94.9 billion versus 89.4 billion. Man, we've seen some growth in total revenue uh, on a year on over year basis. And again, like I said, this was a September record. You know, we're getting close. I mean, this isn't even their strongest quarter, right? We're seeing their whole their quarter will probably be over 100 billion again, 100 billion dollars. You look at their gross margin, 48.8 billion versus 40 billion. But you're looking down below here. I mean, I'm going to skip down here to the net income. 14.7 versus 22.956. What's going on? Okay, well, we're going to talk about that. 
Operating income, $29.5 billion versus 26, looks good. The big difference here was the provision for income taxes. We're gonna talk about this. I won't get into that right now, but basically that was a one-time charge. We saw 14.8 billion versus just 4 billion a year ago, and that's what hit it. So if you exclude that one-time charge, which is over $10 billion, we are actually talking this quarter, realistically speaking, $25 billion in that income, huge beat from the 22.9 a year ago. And of course that affects EPS. EPS looks really bad. EPS was a significant beat as well. 1.64 billion, billion, sorry, dollars uh, per share versus 1.46. But of course this has to be official. They have this one-time charge that's in there and that's why you're seeing uh, 97 cents a share. Net sales by reportable segment. Let me see if I can actually zoom in here a little bit for you guys. Uh, basically up everywhere. So it was a pretty good quarter. Um, America's almost 42, 41.6 billion. It was 40 a year ago. Europe was 24.9. They're saying that they have some pretty good growth sectors in Europe. India's in there, a couple different areas you might not expect uh, in the Europe section here. But versus 22.4 billion a year ago, up significantly. What's hurting it, of course, still, I mean, we're doing better, but greater China, a year ago was 15.08 billion, we're 15.03. Um, so some slight weakness in the China, and that seems like what all the bears are focusing on is this China section here, right? Japan, uh, 5.9 billion versus 5.5 billion, a beat there again. Rest of the Asia, Asia Pacific, 7.3 versus 6.3, huge beat there again, so that you can see why the total net sales are up. Uh, on a year over year basis. Let's go to net sales by category here. Uh, net sales by category. Uh, iPhone, 46.2 versus 43.8 billion a year ago. I feel like, and I've said this a couple times before, but years ago, everybody used to focus on this so much. Like, it's gotta be iPhone, it's gotta be iPhone. But yet when iPhone's doing pretty good, you know, sequentially or on a year over year basis, I feel like the stock's still down. That's up significantly. Uh, well, we've seen some weakness in the previous quarter, so maybe that's why, but 46.2 versus 43.8, that's great. Mac, 7.7 .7 versus 7.6. .6. We talked about this being uh, slightly weak, but like I said before, this little spiel I gave you on the new Macs coming out, I expect some more strength in this Mac. iPad, 6.95 billion versus 6.4, so we've actually seen some growth year over year, and I believe that's with the new chipset, the M4 that's in there. I think they'll continue to do pretty well because it's put Pretty phenomenal uh, tablets. Weakness, we've talked about the wearables, homes, and accessories, 9.04 billion versus 9.32 billion a year ago. So of course we're down in there. I don't know if they're gonna turn that around anytime soon. Like I said, maybe they need uh, a little bit more updates in terms of their uh, AirPods uh, Pro and stuff like that. So we'll see what's going on with that. Services, again, huge. It's almost $25 billion, like I said, 22.3 billion. A year ago so yeah I mean generally speaking whew, it was it was pretty good quarter even though you know some of the weaknesses we saw in China so on the conference call they reiterated this you know this is a September quarter record it was up six percent year over year so that's total revenues up six percent I know that's not like a huge clip or no, we're not growing 30 percent plus but yeah it was six percent services hit an all-time record of 12 percent year over year Again, as they're always saying, all-time high of the install base. Uh, I feel like that's something that they talk about every single quarter, but of course it's very important. Now we're gonna be talking about this one-time income tax charge. Uh, so that was 10.2 billion. That was to do, uh, it was a charge, and it was to do with the reversal of the uh, UE decision. Um, so some of their legal battles that are going on there. So again, like I said, when this was excluded, Net income was $25 billion a quarter and diluted EPS was $1.64. So some pretty strong numbers there as well. Guide, there wasn't much talk about this. There was quite a few analysts that asked questions about this. Uh, but basically what they said was the December revenue was gonna grow at low to single digits. A lot of them were pushing on that. They didn't wanna give any more uh, guidance. But you know, I think some of the consensus was maybe seven, maybe 8% growth. Uh, in the December quarter, and they're talking a little bit lower than that. So I think that's what's something that's kind of hampering the stock a little bit. Um, services, uh, Q4 
course, again, they're going to see a double digit growth uh, in services uh, in the next quarter. And of course, this is the strength that we always kind of see. So, what you know, how do I think about this quarter? I think it was a good quarter. Uh, I don't think I told you guys a couple months ago, I probably sold about 100, 150 shares. So not, not a huge amount, but sold about two at 230. I just wanted to pull some cash off the table. Uh, but I think it's still a pretty solid hold. I still, you know, hold over six figures uh, in Apple just themselves. Um, but it's gonna be interesting to see going forward uh, how they're gonna they're gonna navigate this, you know, environment that we're in. I think that these high interest rates are finally starting to cook, um, catch up to consumers, and that's why we're seeing the Fed, we're seeing Canada, we're seeing Bank of Canada dropping rates. Uh, but there's usually or I should probably always say always a lag effect. Uh, so it's, we might see some weakness for a while in the consumer, but it's gonna be interesting to see going forward. So I'd love to know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below about that. How do you think we're gonna see Apple in the next couple quarters? Where do you think it's going? Uh, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe guys, and I'll see you in the next one.